You're listening to the Unlocking Financial Freedom Podcast, episode number two. In today's episode, we'll be discussing how to unlock your financial freedom through the wealth preservation pillar of financial planning. In other words, I'll be showing you how to manage your financial risks so you can have the peace of mind knowing that your family is secured and protected. I'll also be talking about our launch compensation, which we're hosting on our social media platforms. So stay tuned. Hello, Sanmona Nijani. My name is Samkelo Makoko, aka Chief Kasi Economist, but you can also call me the Government Khan. Welcome to the Unlocking Financial Freedom Podcast. This is the second episode, and I'm excited that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to listen to this. This is part two of three in the series, and in the first part, I introduced you to financial planning and financial freedom. More specifically, I introduced you to the relationship between financial planning and financial freedom and discussed how taking charge of your personal finances can help you achieve financial freedom. I also shared with you the reason why I'm passionate about the subjects of personal financial planning and the subject of personal development and self-help as a whole. If you didn't get a chance to listen to this episode, I suggest that you listen to it first and come back to this one. To begin this topic of wealth preservation and achieving financial freedom, I'd like to ask you a few questions. God forbid, if you were to die today, will your family inherit debt or will they inherit the wealth you've worked so hard over your lifetime to amass? Would your credit financed assets such as your house or flat be repossessed? If you had to be disabled on a temporary or a permanent basis, would you be able to afford your life? If your business partner or a key employee in your business were to pass away today, would you be able to continue trading successfully in your business? While you think about the answer to those questions, let's go to a short break so we can find out more about the conversation we're hosting on our social media. See you after this. Hey guys, Sanmona and Ninjani. I'm Chief Kasi Economist, and I'd like to share an exciting conversation I'm hosting on my website. The winner of the competition will walk away with a registered company as well as a well-designed WordPress website. So listen up on how you enter. Step 1. Log on to YouTube and search for my channel which is Chief Kasi Economist. Once you find the channel, the first thing you'll do is that you'll subscribe to it and then share any of the videos you find on the channel on Facebook with the hashtag Samkelo M-A-G. Samkelo Mag. Then the second step is that you log on Facebook and search for Chief Kasi Economist again. Then you'll find my page, and the first thing you'll do, you'll like the page, and then after liking it, share the page on your Facebook profile with the hashtag Samkelo Mag or Samkelo MAG. The grand prize, as I said, includes a registered company and a well-designed WordPress website. So, get on the competition and start entering. Welcome back, guys. I hope you guys are excited about the competition I'm hosting for my Sankelo Mako personal brand. And you know what to do, guys, as you head on the advert. So that's me to you guys. So 
you must do the things that need to be done for you to enter the conversation. So back to our subject. When thinking about financial freedom, a lot of people tend to look at the wealth creation part of things and they look at the amount of money they want to have, the types of assets they want to amass over their time, as well as the type of lifestyle they want to live. It's quite rare to find a person who thinks about the peace of mind wealth preservation gives and the financial freedom it can provide. So as a family man or a woman, you must think about questions such as, will your children be able to live and afford the type of lifestyle you've made them accustomed to when you're gone and you're not here? And as a young professional, your biggest asset is your earning potential. So maybe you don't have a house, you don't have fancy assets, but you do have yourself and your education and that's your biggest asset basically. So it's quite important to cover yourself as much as you might have a car, a luxury sports utility vehicle and you could cover for it. You must also take cover on your own life. And as a business person or a businesswoman or a businessman, if your business partner might die, you might run the risk of having their family coming into your business because you don't have the money to buy their stake in the business. Taking out key person insurance is quite important. And if you have a key person such as an employee that is very productive in your business and if this employee were to pass away, then your business would be a bit slow and coming back and being operational. It's quite important to look at those things. I'm sure you've got a few questions in your mind. And for example, if you are a young professional, you often ask yourself, do I really need insurance? It won't happen to me. I won't die now. I won't be disabled. These are the questions and are the struggles you have in your mind as a young professional. And I know and I understand because I'm also a young professional. As a business owner, You might also be asking yourself, is there any value in my business? Is there a key employee in this business who is worthy to be insured? And as a family man or woman, in these tough economic times, you might also ask yourself, is it really worth it to pay for so much insurance, whereas you can use this money now to pay for current expenses in your budget? These are all the questions you might have in your mind, and I understand. On top of this, you might also be thinking, I don't owe anyone anything. I don't have to take insurance for my family. I'm my own person. And some people can actually ask themselves, is this insurance thing a scam? Considering what happened to the Momentum case last year. If you didn't see what happened to Momentum, I suggest you check it out. And I'll also link it in the show notes so that you can recap on that Momentum story. So some people are actually asking, is the insurance industry itself fair? Is life in itself fair? Leaving money behind for children is such a bad idea. They'll just blow it all away at once and be left with nothing. Some people even ask themselves, Will I be encouraging my wife and other people in my life and in my family to kill me since they know that I have life insurance, vice versa, my check and all that? These are all the things that people ask themselves in townships, in suburbs, everywhere. These are things that people actually ask themselves. And I know you're asking yourself these questions. So I want to answer them for you and put you at ease, basically. During this short time I've lived on this earth, I've been able to see how tragic moments can have adverse effects on a person's life. And I also understand that you might study and become a professional. And during that time, you might also pass on prematurely when you've just started working, when your family is just enjoying the benefits of you working and the benefits of you getting that Um, salary. 
In the year 2018, a friend of mine passed on who was working in Joburg. And he was doing quite well in the corporate um, world. He had climbed the corporate ladder. And he passed on during the long weekend, le ega April to May, around 27 April. And I was distraught and my friends were distraught. It's like how this guy just passed on just like that, man. It was so painful. And also, when I was in varsity, there was a guy who was very active in politics, a young gentleman who was very active in politics. Um, I think he had done pharmacy or something. And when he got a job, soon after he got that job, he crashed his car and passed on. He had just started working. So in those kind of things, as black people also, it's quite important to know that you're not only working for yourself, in most cases that is, and a lot of people benefit from a salary. Many times newly employed professionals will argue that they have group life cover from their employees. And as much as this is true, it's quite important for you to ask the question, will that cover be sufficient for the loved ones you've left behind? If you are a person that comes from a wealthy background and you don't really look after a lot of people and no one really benefits from your salary, then maybe it's fine for you not to take life cover. Maybe it's fine for you not to have a million rands cover on your life. And also, if you don't have a child or a dependent, you cannot take life cover if you don't want to. That's up to you. But to those that do take care of their families, it's quite important for you to take care of these things, to have cover on your life. Because it's so sad seeing a family that had invested so much in your life. I know my family has invested so much in my life, from primary, from infant years, high school, varsity, taking care of me. I know that they, obviously, my mom, my dad brought me into this world. I don't owe anyone anything. But at the same time, I know that they could have mistreated me while growing up. They could have killed me even if they didn't want to have this child to raise. But they didn't kill me. They didn't mistreat me. And they gave me an education. So the best thing I can do is also to take care of them. Also, to the family men or the family woman, as a parent, the toughest decision you have to make is, of course, your budget and your finances. You have to balance the current spending and the future spending. There was a guy who passed on. Um, he was a world-class driver. Uko Kozul. May his soul rest in peace. Um, his wife actually came out um, in the media and said it was very tough for them to carry on with life after her husband died. So those type of situations, and it took courage for her to actually come out in the media and say that because Uko was someone who was in the spotlight. So for her, I commend her to actually come out into the spotlight to talk about these things because this makes other people to be aware that it's quite important to plan for your estate, to plan for life after death. So these things happen. And also, I also make this example about um, during the time I was growing up in townships, you would find that some of the people we went to school with or the neighbors or people around the township, um, you didn't understand what was that. But that meant that their parents didn't take care of their risks in terms of having life cover so that if they pass on or when they pass on, then the bond would be paid off because those houses were bought on credit. And also to the person who's um, a business person, as much as, um, for example, choosing a private company as a form of ownership significantly reduces your liability. 
There are instances, though, where stakeholders of your business can hold you accountable on a personal liability type of um, situation. When you make um, some mistakes in your business and you become personally liable. The risk of being bankrupt due to your business initiatives can actually have adverse effects on your family. So it's quite important for you to take care of those things. Also, another important thing to note is that I also, as some girl on my court, must take my own advice. My late brother, Budim Kusin, was a financial planner, a financial advisor, a great one even. I think also that's why I actually went into this route because he was there, he did it, and I, I actually looked up to him. So my late brother, bless his soul, and I love him so much. He passed on and unfortunately he had not made sufficient provisions for his finances. Granted, he had made some provisions through taking out certain policies and thank God he did. But these were not enough and there were shortcomings in his life. For example, the beautiful car he had bought was repossessed. And the reason for that was, well, when he was experiencing financial difficulty, one of the first things he cut down on was short-term insurance on his car. Because the nature of um, financial planning and the way we are remunerated, the way we are paid, is quite cruel. We paid on commissions, and they don't really teach us in these companies to build a trade commission, to build passive income within the remuneration structures that are existent in the financial planning industry. So he succumbed to that and he didn't have a passive income. So when he fell sick, his income also stopped. So this is the nature of the industry we are in. You earn commission and our managers never teach us um, to diversify our portfolios and our businesses. So I say this to say, also on myself, it's quite important for me to take my own advice because it would be unfortunate to see that when I've passed on, I haven't made provisions also for my family. I'm sure you guys would also be disappointed. So now, what changes should you make then as a family? What changes should you make as a um, young professional, as a business person? Um, let's get into those. Now, as a family man or woman, if you're worried about your children, um, that they'll misuse the world you've worked hard for, that you've worked hard to accumulate over your lifetime, then you can ensure protection of your world and also ensure that this world is handed over to younger generations of your family through engaging in estate planning. Basically, estate planning entails you planning for your life after death because when you pass on, a new taxpayer arises, which is the estate. And there's also this joke or this thing that is often said a lot, that in life there are two certainties, death as well as taxes, that you'll die and that you'll always pay taxes and you even pay taxes after death, just imagine. But your estate then, um, that's the correct um, legal term to say it, your estate then pays taxes. So you need to ensure that your estate is managed optimally so that assets are not sold off to pay off debts um, on your estate. So there are certain liabilities that will need to be paid when you pass away. Just like the prime example of the debts of your assets such as your house or your car which you bought on credit. And also when you pass on, it is deemed that you made your last tax return the day before you passed on. So if you made your, your tax return the day before you passed on, they sell your houses. They deem that they've, sell, they've sold your house. Um, they deem that if you have a business, they've sold your trading stock. They deem that um, all of the income you've received is added into your gross income. And they calculate your tax liability for the year. 
So if there's no money to pay for this tax liability, then there may be a need to sell off some assets in your estate in order to settle these liabilities. Um, there's also executor fees for the person who will be winding up your estate. So there's a lot of money that needs to go out when you pass on. And there's a lot of money and services that you need to take care of when you pass on. So it's quite important to have that liquidity in your portfolio. So one of the ways to do this is that when you have a life policy, a life cover policy, over and above perhaps a life cover policy that you had um, to secure your bond, you can take out another life cover policy and don't um, add a beneficiary on that policy, for instance. And then on that policy, the proceeds will go directly into your estate and then there would be some liquidity on that estate so that if you have a huge tax liability um, as well as executor fees to pay off, those proceeds from that policy can be used to pay off those policies to or rather to pay off for those um, expenses and those liabilities because you don't want to be in a situation where you are in a forced sale where you have to sell your asset much much under the the fair value that you can get in the market because you really want to pay for those expenses and the government is in your case but it's important to note that for estate planning purposes and estate duty you have an abatement or a tax break of like three and a half million your estate has that so everyone has this and your estate duty will be levied on the amounts over this and also they say it's less liability so they take into account your assets they remove the liabilities from those assets and then if there's any amount that is over and above three and a half million of your net estate then you'll pay estate truth on that so it's essentially a wealth tax and a lot of people you'll find that they don't actually pay estate duty because they don't have assets that are over net assets that are over three and a half million especially for us black people as much as there's a growing black middle class but this usually doesn't happen planning for estates over and above having this three and a half million um tax break and estate planning or estate truth essentially being a world tax it's important to plan for estate because if your family structure is complicated and for example you have a wife who is not the mother of your children provisions such as limited rights um rights such as usufructs and bed dominium rights those are limited rights look them up rights such as limited rights can ensure that your wife doesn't get kicked out of the home for example you might say in your will i give my house to my son a on the condition that my wife has the right of use so your son owns the house but your wife has the right of use so that when your son owns the house they don't kick out your wife during the time your wife is still around they won't get kicked out also what you can actually do is you can um if your mom for example even if your mother you can ensure that um, your mother is not kicked out by your wife when you pass on so for example you can say i gave this house to my wife on condition that she doesn't kick out my mom then my mom will have the right of use and enjoyment so that's um limited rights so for the business owner another reason why estate planning is important is because opening up a trust and putting all your assets into a trust ensures protection of your assets against creditors people can actually open class action lawsuits against you if a group of employees or a group of stakeholders in your business feel aggrieved they can open a class action lawsuit and sue you on your personal capacity and not only sue the company but sue you as a director of the company this means that the limited liability characteristic of a company is now questionable in the context of trust trust can then provide asset protection because section 7 of the company's act of 2008 gives more powers to employees and tries basically to align the company's law to the south african constitution where trade unions have um rights and people have rights to act 
um, and ask you questions as the company and as the leader of the company. So there's a new approach to compliance, and this is through personal liability. And Section 76 of the Companies Act also states that a director must act with due care, skill, and diligence when conducting business. So what this basically means is if you didn't perhaps do a feasibility analysis when you went into a new venture and your employees were then retrenched or they were laid off because you didn't do your homework before you entered into a new venture, your employees may have recourse to actually open a class action lawsuit um, against you and they can then sue you on your personal capacity. So it's quite important for you as a business owner to have um, protection of your assets through a trust because also your creditors can actually come through um, and sue you through a class action lawsuit if they believe that um, you acted recklessly when you borrowed money from them, when you bought goods on credit, when you bought stock on credit, they can actually sue you in your personal capacity. So yeah, it's quite important to have a trust in that sense. So as a young professional also, you can work towards um, absorbing financial risks, obviously, that you face. I know that a lot of young people say insurance is a waste of time, it's a waste of money, they want to consider absorbing their, their, their risks themselves. And for those people who say that, I say, if you have a million rents lying around, then you're fine. <laughs> but if you don't, you need to get cover for yourself. Even if you don't get life cover, like a death benefit, because you say death won't come to you now. I would really suggest that you really get um, protection of your earning ability. Um, and these are usually divided into two um, frameworks or two aspects. There's a lump sum disability cover and there's also an income disability cover. So the lump sum cover is actually paid up, is actually paid out when permanent is established, when it's actually established that you're permanently disabled. And the income benefit pays even if you are disabled on a temporary basis. So it's quite important for you or for your advisor to explain these characteristics of these earning ability covers because you'll find that you might be disabled on a temporary basis and you think that you'll get some money but you took out a, a lump sum disability benefit and you won't get any money because they're still assessing your the, the permanence and, and, and the severity of your disability. But if you take out an income protection that pays a benefit, even if you are on a temporary disability basis, then even when permanence is being established, you can still get payments and so on. It's quite important for you to understand those differences. And it's so hard for you to know that even when they're still establishing um, permanence on a disability, you still have to pay for your premiums. So it's quite important for you to understand those differences. And that's why you usually need a financial advisor usually. There are a lot of opportunities that you can um, take advantage of and you can exploit in estate planning. So for example, um, the effect of selling assets or donating them into a trust when they are growing, like assets such as your house, which are capital gain assets, is that um, the growth will be frozen for estate duty purposes um, and to the amount of the loan or to the value of the no donation for tax purposes. So when you're selling assets into a trust, you usually do it by way of um, a loan account. So you open up a loan account and say, you're selling these assets to this um, trust on a loan account and you'll be selling them at that value at that time. When those assets are then in the loan account, then the estate is essentially frozen to that amount of money. Any growth then will be growing into the trust and it won't be on your side. And then you obviously the trust has then to pay you that, that loan, has to pay you yearly, pay off that loan and so on. So if assets drop in value, the loan account will be worth correspondingly a lesser amount. But it's quite important to note then that um, if there's no interest charge on the loan, you will be reviewed under Section 7C, which is the anti-avoidance um, section of um, the Income Tax Act. 
because a lot of um, wealthy individuals usually did this. They sold assets um, into their trust um, through a loan account and they didn't charge interest on those loan accounts or they charge a really low amount of interest on those loan accounts. And the government didn't like that because they were avoiding tax. All in all, what I can say is you must take this moment to first personally look at your potential risks and then conduct a financial planner. Take this moment to speak to a professional financial planner, a financial advisor about your situation and uh, ask them to assess your risk. If you want to do it yourself or do it through a direct insurer and buy life cover through the likes of um, your momentums, your one lives and so on, and eliminate the middleman, which is the broker, which is the financial advisor. Well, you can do this. It's fine. But the advantage of going through a personal financial planner and an advisor is that they take time out to explain these details of your policy to you. Just like um, the example I made about um, income protection, um, the, the lump sum disability benefit as well as the income benefit, um, when um, the lump sum benefit only pays out once permanent is established, and during that time, the doctor is establishing permanence. You're still having to be praying for the premium. Whereas the income, um, the monthly income protection, the income provider actually pays you an income, even if you are disabled on a temporary basis. A financial plan actually explains this to you. As a young professional, engaging in risk management at an early age will give you the peace of mind knowing that your family will still benefit through your education even if you pass on or maybe you'll be able to continue with life if a tragic life event occurs such as disability and as a family man or woman ensuring that you leave a legacy for your children and that your children don't end up being in the streets is quite important so taking care of um, your risk planning needs is quite important for you too and making sure that your assets don't fall into the wrong hands when you pass on is quite important for you as an entrepreneur ensuring continuity of your business through key main policies whether key employees or key business partners taking out business assurance can help you ensure the continuity of your business and ensure your legacy in your business and it can also help protect your family's assets against creditors because, as I said, you can be sued by creditors and other stakeholders through class action lawsuits and they can sue you on your personal capacity. All in all, you will have peace of mind knowing that you've taken care of the basics in your life and that your family is covered. When I was doing economics, we were taught to think at the margin so thinking at the margin, you must look at your situations in this way, for example. For as little as 10 rands a day, which is like 200 rands a month, you could get like a million rands life cover, which could save your family from so much hassles. Stop looking at your premium as like, ah, oh, 200 rands, so much money. Think of it like as 10 rands a day. Simple as that, at the margin, you spend 10 rands a day on a pack of cigarettes, not even a pack of cigarettes, only like, what, five, three loose of cigarettes. If you drink coffee, you spend 10 rands a day, like 30 rands a cup of coffee. Think about those, those types of things. Think at the margin. For as little as 10 rands a day, you can save your life. You can save your family from all of that tragedy. Um, the risk of losing all your life's work, what you've worked so hard to accumulate over your life may be repossessed when you die. And in closing, for the skeptical Christian, the born again Christian who is skeptical and says, if you take out insurance, that means you have no faith in God, that you are not giving God his role to play. Well, I want you to think about this for a moment. When you look at all the successful preachers who are rooted in the word of God and in righteousness, do you think they take out insurance or not? When you look at the Joyce Myers, the Dr. Miles Monroe's, 
who actually passed on to someone's Monroe, may his soul rest in peace. If you look at all of these pastors, the Jesse Duplantis, all of these pastors, do you think they take out insurance or not? Of course they do. And the late Dr. Miles Monroe even speaks about this in one of his talks where he's talking to men. He speaks about the Kimmen policies and all that. There's a scripture in the Bible, I forget where it is, but a lot of people know the scripture. It says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Let that sink in. That scripture says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. If you pass on and your family is not able to take care of their needs, then who will your family blame? You or God? Don't be a foolish Christian who fails to understand the principles of governance and insurance. These concepts are also covered in the Bible. So that's it, guys. Um, that was episode two of the Unlocking Financial Freedom podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if there's anything I didn't cover, um, or if there's anything you want to ask about um, for me to expand on, you can comment on um, social media or any way we can find me and ask me about those and I'll be glad to explain them to you. And I hope this was informative, this was nice to listen to. Um, I wanted to make it shorter but it became longer. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget to enter that competition, guys, uh, that I'm hosting on um, my social media platform. So I am Chief Kasi Economist, aka the government guy, aka Sam Kelumakoko. Goodbye, guys. See you on the next one.